What is up ladies and gents, Ghost here, back with some more Battlefield 4, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at some of the new weapons that are coming out with the second Assault DLC. We're going to be going over their recoil, and just generally seeing how they look and how they handle. Alrighty guys, so here we have the F2000, which is the assignment unlock for the Assault class. This was definitely one of my favourite weapons from Battlefield 3. It was a hip throwing beast, it had 850 rounds per minute, just like it has now in Battlefield 4, so no change there. I'm assuming in this version as well, it's going to be a hip firing beast as it does have a bullpup design there. Now, let's take a look at the weapon itself. You're going to notice here that for the optics, we have a special F2000 sight with a 1.6x zoom. So that's a special sight that comes only with this weapon. A little bit more zoom than the hollow sight there. So we're going to whap that on, see how that pairs out. Then we have the laser sight, which is for me, Pretty much a no-brainer since this weapon is great at hip firing, especially with that high rate of fire. Um, compensator, I'm thinking, might be the best choice here. From Battlefield 3, it did have quite a lot of side-to-side -side wiggle, so I'm going to leave the compensator on there for now, and I'm going to go with the ergo grip. So, let's spawn in here and check out the recoil on this thing. First of all, check out that sight. That thing looks pretty cool, man. And as you can see, quite a lot. Of magnification there looks pretty good with that huge gun sight around there it does take up quite a large portion of your screen but you also have quite a large circle to aim through there so let's see how we can do here in full auto wow they have really nerfed the recoil on this thing that is not a lot at all i mean let's move up to a little bit more medium-ish range here wow that is Oh my god, this weapon. This weapon is going to be amazing, guys. You can expect to see everyone running around with this thing. 850 rounds per minute. Say goodbye to the Ace 23, guys. I mean, let's go all the way up top of this hill here. I'm just I'm just curious to see what kind of a spread I can get from up here. You know, and that is pretty good. I mean, compared to the Battlefield 3 version of this weapon... This thing just really doesn't have a lot of recoil at all. And look at that hip fire. Even when I move, I have a laser sight on here. The crosshairs hardly get bigger at all. This thing has amazing hip fire. Check that out. This is definitely going to be the assault rifle when the second assault comes out. I'm looking forward to doing a gun guide on this one. Next up, we've got the PDW for the Engineer class. It is the AS Val, another fan favourite coming back from Battlefield 3 here. And you're going to notice that this weapon has a suppressor on the end here. And you can't take it off, and it doesn't need to be put on either. And you're also going to notice that you do not have any barrel attachment for this weapon. So it comes with a suppressor all the time. For the attachments, I'm going to go with the red dot sight, laser sight, and for under barrel, I'm thinking stubby grip. I was going to go for angled grip, but what actually made this weapon so great in Battlefield 3 is that it had a first shot multiplayer of zero. So really, if that is still the case, the angled grip will not be required. Alrighty, so here we are in Siege of Shanghai. I just thought we could use a little bit of a change of scenery. And as you can see here, the hip fire of this thing is pretty damn good. Let's just try out the hip fire first of all on this weapon. Now you're also going to notice that we only have 20 rounds in a magazine. Back in BF3, you could unlock extended mags for this weapon. So it came with 20, and you could unlock an extended magazine of 10, giving you 30 all in all. But in BF4, we're not going to be able to do that. So you're definitely going to have to conserve your rounds. Now, let's take a look at ADSing here. First of all, I'm not going to control recoil at all, just so we can see what kind of uh, deviation we get. So as you can see there, it goes severely up and to the right. So we don't really need a compensator, which is just as well, since we can't equip any kind of barrel attachment whatsoever. All we need to do is pull down and a little bit to the left in this sort of a fashion. Now, as I mentioned before, back in BF3, this weapon had a first shot multiplayer of zero. So if you would fire two shots like this, they would literally go in exactly the same place. And uh, as you can see, that does not appear to be the case anymore. It has, quite obviously, a hefty first shot multiplayer. So maybe, in fact, going for angled grip is the way to go with this weapon. 
Moving on to support here, we have the M60E4, which once again, one of my favorite weapons. Um, it feels like DICE actually came and just talked to me and was like, hey Ghost, what weapons do you want in the game? Because these probably are the weapons that I would have picked. As you can see, it has a box magazine here with 100 rounds in it, nicely depicted by that painting there on the side of the weapon. Let's take a look, take a look at the stats here. We actually only have 570 uh, rate of fire. So this was actually 580 in BF3. I wonder why they decided to take that down by 10. doesn't really seem that it would make that much of a difference. And this is a heavy machine gun. So, well, it is an LMG, but it fires the heavier type of round. It does more damage, and I think it has the damage model that goes up to 34 max damage with one shot. So for attachments here, we're going to go with the Reflex RDS. Laser sight, once again, and I'm thinking muzzle break, since this is such a high power weapon here. Let's see how this thing pairs up to the rest of the LMGs. That's actually pretty accurate there. I mean, I can keep sustained fire here without there really being much recoil at all. Now, as you can see there, if I just let it rip, there really is very little vertical recoil, but there is a hell of a lot of sway from left to right, and there is a hell of a lot of bullet deviation. So burst firing this thing, having the compensator on there, and being at a decent range is probably going to be your key to victory. Let's try on this wall here. Nice clean wall. is surprisingly accurate. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by this weapon, to be honest. I mean, look at those spreads from that range with an LMG of this power. I can't wait to try this thing out. It's going to be an absolute beast. Moving on to the recon class, we have the Gull Magnum sniper rifle here, and this is quite interesting because this is one of the only weapons that wasn't actually in Battlefield 3, but it was in Bad Company 2. So I thought the name sounded familiar to me, but I was like, hmm, this wasn't in BF3. Anyway, we'll take a look at the stats for the weapon here. As you can see, magazine size is only five. So one of, I think, only three sniper rifles that actually have that small of magazine size. The ammo type here is 338 Magnum, and the damage is pretty high up there. So not that it matters particularly much, as you're going to have to one-shot somebody in the headshot and two-shot them in the body with any sniper rifle. We're still going to go here over to the range and test this thing out. And one main thing I'm actually looking for here, not that I use snipers a lot, is actually uh, how fast we can fire this thing. So, as you can see, this thing reloads pretty damn fast, which I think is something unique amongst the sniper rifles. Most of them take a little bit longer to pull the bolt back there and ready the next round. So despite this thing having five shots, you can fire it quite quickly. However, you probably don't want to do that since you do only have five shots. You don't have ten in the chamber there, and you don't really want to be caught with your pants down. Let's see how fast the reload on the actual shells is here. So reload time for the sniper rifle itself is actually not too shabby. So the final weapon we're going to look at today is the new shotgun, the Doubt 12 here. And uh, probably a lot of people are going to be quite annoyed to see this weapon back because it was in BA3 and people got quite annoyed with people using it. It was extremely powerful. As you can see, 12 rounds in a magazine and it's a 12 gauge as well. So this is a semi-auto shotgun here. We're gonna see how it does. Although I will say that you guys will definitely be surprised with the reload time of this thing. It may be very fast firing and it may have 12 rounds and it may be powerful, but if you waste all those shots and get caught with your pants down having to reload, you're essentially going to be screwed. So as you can see, it fires pretty fast, but look at this reload time. Yeah, it's it's pretty long. Like that wouldn't surprise me if that was the longest reload time in the entire game right now. So it does come with a trade-off. Now, if you'd like to try these weapons out for yourself, you can go ahead and jump in an unranked server, and as long as you have premium, you should be able to simply equip the weapons and try them out 
however you like. But you won't really find any other players in the unranked servers, so you're going to be pretty much limited to doing the kind of thing that I've been doing. There is one exception though, you can actually unlock the AS Val currently, but that is only because the assignment doesn't require you to do anything on an actual second assault map. So most of the other assignments require you to do something like taking out the radio tower in Caspian border. And obviously, since we don't yet have access to the maps, we can't do that yet. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little look at the weapons of second assault. I know not all of you guys out there have premium and uh, you're not all able to just jump in an unranked server and check these weapons out yourself. So hopefully this was of some use to all of you guys. Hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.